Hi, everybody. Uh, I've been giving a talk lately about working with rational primitives, that is, taking shapes like spheres and cones and cylinders and toruses and using them as basic building blocks for doing architectural form. It's a long standing and well honored tradition. Uh, here are three examples Foster's and Partners, Elephant House, could be Berlin Zoo, Copenhagen Zoo, I can't remember. Uh, the project by Moshe Safi's architects, it's a roof form, and uh, I believe this is the Pantheon. And one of the reasons that this is a popular way of doing form making is because you can come out with, oh come on, there we go. You can come out with forms that have some real efficiencies. So Homer Simpson and Norman Foster have an abiding love of donuts. You can see that showing up in things like the Apple headquarters in Cupertino and two other projects in the UK. All of these have in common that they are toruses or toroidal sections. Torus is also known as donuts. And you can come up with some very different kinds of shapes based on that starting point. And one of the nice things about donuts, other than they're tasty, is that they have some known efficiencies when you start breaking them down into panelized forms. Here uh, we're seeing this lovely rainbow donut, which is made out of panels that are all being measured by their edge length. So what we can see here is that the same color means the same edge length. So what we can see here is that each one of these panels, as you go around the perimeter of the torus, has the same edge length, uh, which means that they're basically identical panels. Now they are actually identical as you go around the edges. And here the blue indicates that these are all planar panels. There's an earlier part of this talk that goes into how you can get this panel, and I can talk about those in other blog posts. But basically this is showing that when you break up toruses into panelized pieces, you get uh, some very efficient pieces that are cheaper to manufacture, cheaper to understand, cheaper to describe, and uh, effective. And so going into this project by uh, Norman Foster, is the elephant house and it is essentially a toroidal section when you look at it from underneath it's just a big swooping structure it looks very nice but when you break down how you actually put the thing together you're really just looking at two donuts that are put in opposition to each other and then shaped and cut into the particular shape that you want now <clears throat> what I'm going to go into is how you would actually just sort of build this as a parametric form in Revit or Vasari, and then how you can start flexing it to sort of massage these basic shapes into the pieces that you want, and then how to break them up into panelized surfaces. So let's get to it. Here I've got my session of Vasari open, and I'm just going to do a quick create mass. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set up the basic building blocks for one toroidal section and then I'm going to copy it. So I'm going to start off by using reference lines and this is going to be my manner of sort of controlling the location of where my toroidal section is. So I'm going to pick this plane right here and no, oh, did I put that in the right place? I did not put that on level one. Sorry. Set work plane and I'm going to do my reference line right here. And I'm going to take that reference line and I'm going to put the two pieces that you need to make a torus on it. So I'm going to take the circle and I'm going to put it on this reference line like that. Shabam. And I'm going to do a line here. And so this is going to be the axis of rotation of that particular profile. And before I go and I rotate them, I'm actually going to parameterize both of these so that I can actually control both the size of this and the size of where the axis is from everything else. And so I'm going to get an align dimension and I'm going to select that guy and the end point of that line. And between those two things, I'm going to have the ability to control most of the aspects of this thing. And I'll make it an instance parameter. And this is going to be, uh, let's call this profile radius. And we'll just call it profile. It's easier. <coughs> and here I'm going to take this and I'm going to call this my axis. I'll also make it an instance prof instance parameter. And pretty much good to go there. I'm going to take these two guys and I'm going to go create form. 
and now I've got my donut. Now I want to make that into a section of a donut. So I'm going to go and I'm going to set my work plane now to level one. And I'm going to make a big rectangle like that. And instead of just hitting create form, I'm going to hit create void form. And so now I've got this yellowy blob, which is going to cut my torus into a nice little chunk like that. So now we can start seeing I'm getting that one side of that toroidal section that you saw in Norman Foster's project. And I can manipulate this in a number of different ways. One is just numerically. I can go and say, you know, actually I want this to be a little bit smaller. So I'm going to take the profile, I'm going to reduce it to 20. And just apply that. I can change how I want that arc to work. So I can make that smaller also. There we go. I can also manipulate these things sort of physically by just stretching these things around like so. So now I can take this thing and I can just bail out of my mass here for a second and I can just have it back in the project environment and in the project environment I can also go and manipulate it as well. I can make it, you got to make sure that you're profile is not going to get bigger than your axis or else the thing is going to fold in on itself and it'll just tell you that it fails. But uh, in the meantime, I can get something like this. Let me just get it a little bit bigger here so we can get some floor area faces cut into it. And 40. Let me just try that. Looks like that. And now I can take this guy and I can also do mass floors on it. Although, of course, this is not how the zoo project went together. This is just to sort of show you how you can start leveraging the project environment. So there I've got my floors, so I can start reading off things like gross floor area and surface volumes. I can start deciding whether or not this is the right size or the right shape. I'm going to turn those off again just because I don't really need them right now. And then the other part of this then is getting into, well wait, I'll get into that in a second. Right now I'm going to just take this one shape. So now I'm going to take this guy and I'm going to make a copy of it, which you generally don't want to do with in-place masses, there's a bit more efficiency in using loaded families, but I'm just going to do this now just to show you how you can get some copies of your guys. And I'm going to pick an axis and I'm going to mirror this guy across it. So now I've got two versions of my blobby form. And I'm going to take this one and I'm going to make him a little smaller. Call this guy 20. Nope, that's too small. make this guy a tiny bit smaller too. And you can do that a couple different ways. You can change what that axis is. Makes it a little bit different. But you can also just go back in and edit this guy and drag this guy down. It drags it farther down into that void form, right? You can do the same thing with this guy over here. Drag him in a little bit more. Make it just a smaller bump. Right. And while I'm in here, I'm also going to take this guy and I'm going to pattern it. So if I just tab, so right now I'm tab selecting into the surface of this guy because I need to select a surface in order to divide it like that. And if I do this to both sides and I do it on all of it, then I'll have the whole thing divided, of course. Right now I'm just going to do it on something just to illustrate some of the properties of this surface. So now I've got it divided up, and I can go make a new family. I'm just going to do a super duper simple panel family here. So I just take this whole form, or this whole rig, and I'm just going to make it a new surface. And I just want to make a surface because I want to just illustrate some of the properties of, of a torus. And this isn't anything special to... Vasari or Revit, it's just this is what the natural UV coordinate system that's created for a torus is. If I go and I tab select one of these guys and I'm going to isolate it, you see I've got this little sunglasses icon down here, I can isolate the element. And now I can inspect this thing and I can look at it and realize that you know it is indeed 
entirely a planar surface. I can do that just by inspection. There's also ways that I can show later on in later posts about how you can actually create ways to monitor what the surface properties of these guys are. So then if I go around and I you can select all of these surfaces one at a time. And again, you have to tab into these, which is a bit of a hassle. And I can change this into the same parameterization that the other one was done as. I think it was six and eight. Does it match up? Yeah, six and eight. And then I can pattern that one as well. And oops, no, no pattern. I want that loaded family that I got right there. Finish. And I'm doing this on a bunch of different, on all the surfaces, and you can massage these into place. You can start to get that same kind of shape from the elephant house. And you have your nice paneled surfaces that are all going to be flat, and you're all going to have identical panels on all these bands here, just by virtue of the fact that you're making it out of these rational primitives. In, in particular, this one is a revolve. And even more in particular, it's called the torus. Lots of fun stuff you can do with a torus. Anyway, more to be done with this sort of operation. And there are some frustrations with Boolean operations. Uh, but uh, in general, they can get some really pretty amazing effects. And uh, they do panelize really delightfully when you start cutting up these sorts of shapes. Hope that was informative and fun. Thanks.